Hello, this is a demo of some work that I've been doing in Nodal generative music software. And if you're unfamiliar with Nodal, here's the website and it was developed at SEMA, which is the Center for Electronic Media Art. And it's an environment for making these networks of MIDI notes and MIDI controls. So here's my first scene. Um, I'm not really doing a tutorial, but I will explain some of the decisions I've made. This is sort of a four voice minor pad, and each of these colored triangles represents where one of the voices starts. And I have them mapped to different instruments here. And I'm actually mapping into this loop MIDI port. Loop MIDI is a good Windows software for making virtual MIDI ports. And that's going to Cubase. Um, and each of these uh, is just so I can set up um, absinthe instruments. And then we're listening to the output in Cubase. So I'm not actually doing any sound in Nodal. Uh, you can use general MIDI and I have some versions like that, but um, mostly I'm getting the audio from Absinthe. So let's listen to this first scene and then I'll sort of discuss um, some of the choices. Okay, so I have the four voices. Uh, this orange, blue, and green one are pretty much fixed, although um, they're not really the same as each other. So the green one is the simplest. It's just alternating between two notes. And then the orange one has this, um, this one node here can go one of two places. So it allows me to make a longer line. So it'll go starting here, then here, there, and goes around. And then each time it will alternate between going up the orange arrow and the green arrow. So I think that ends up something like 11 notes. So it goes around and then it goes around again, but this time it skips a note. Um, so we get a lot more complexity in the voice than just four, no four notes in a loop. Um, and then the blue one is pretty similar to that. Uh, it does allow here to go two directions. Now the purple one, this node in the middle can randomly go out to any of these four. And um, actually, so the pitches are basically in a G sharp minor. So for example, here you got G sharp, uh, D sharp, B, and then I also threw the fourth in there. So C sharp. Um, and then here we have G sharp, and then we have a bunch of half steps. We got C, C sharp, D, D sharp. So that kind of gives us some of those blues notes or um, a little more dissonance in comparison to our basic minor chord notes. But because this is random, it uh, sort of causes the overall harmonic texture to be more unstable because you can't even really predict where those half step notes are going to fall. And then it, so it just jumps out from the G sharp 
to one and then it comes back and then randomly picks another one. Okay, and then I have another scene here. And this one just has one voice, but it's a lot more complex. Uh, so let's listen to it first. Okay, so this has a lot more stuff going on, um, but it's playing more than one note at once. And it has this quality of being relatively predictable and having these different shapes um, that repeat, but some of them are not exactly the same. And we have some randomness. So this is the starting point and everything well, not everything, but uh, some of the sort of branches off from this can come back and re-trigger. And uh, what's important here is that this is set to random, so it can go out in any of these four directions. Some of them end up uh, terminating nowhere, and but always everything is going to eventually come back to the center point and re-trigger it. Um, one of the things you have to watch out for if you're just trying to set up a loop is you always want to have a path back to starting more notes playing, but you don't want to have too many paths back because otherwise you just have way too many notes triggered and it starts feeding back on itself. So at the end of each of these lines, it only comes back to this point once. So here, um, this goes down and it ends. And then this comes back. And it, actually, what's more important is whenever you use this parallel setting, that means it goes out both directions. So if you had it going out both, like two directions that then end up coming back and feeding back, every time you hit that parallel node, you're adding a voice, basically. So here we add a voice, but then immediately this one dies off. So same here. We're in parallel. When it goes down, that ends there and then this other one is allowed to sort of feed back again um, so part of why this sounds interesting also is that this network up here um, has pretty like odd rhythms so you notice the distance between each of these points is different and depending on um, which direction it goes out from here it still ends up here eventually like you see how these all sort of funnel up to there uh, but the timing is going to be a little different depending on which direction it chooses to randomly go yeah and then also uh, these low well lower on the sketch but um, these notes are significantly lower. So this is F sharp one, C sharp one, and A sharp one. And in fact, this is supposed to be kind of thereabouts of F sharp major. So we get these nice low sort of notes that pop in every once in a while to ground us in F sharp with some extra color tones added elsewhere. Okay, and I think that's all I have to say. So, uh, yeah, try out Nodal. It's pretty interesting. Thank you.